All right, let's talk about the big one. Anxiety, what does that feel like? How do we handle it? Um, I have no fucking clue. The only thing I've been telling myself how I've been handling my anxiety lately is uh, that it'll pass, that it's just this like wave you're gonna have to ride and hope that you don't drown in it or, or you know, collapse within it or whatever. Um, anxiety is fucking horrible. It's horrible how how much it can really affect my mood, how much it can, uh, I always end up moving this fucking blanket. Um, it's nuts how much it affects my, it affects my life in random ways. It, it, my, my anxiety personally does not, it's not really a daily thing. I can be fine for days, weeks even, and then out of nowhere I'll have a horrible bout of anxiety or, or, or something that out of nowhere I start feeling very existential or feeling very, um, like I start having very big thoughts or, or very very unimportant thoughts that are, are so... I'm always thinking about like grand scheme of life and the grand scheme of things so sometimes I get I get caught up in the uh, the vastness of the universe or I get like caught up in like feeling like a, a very small speck in the grand scheme of time so that, that in and of itself makes me feel very anxious because I'm just constantly you know wondering what the fuck I'm doing I'm wondering what the hell my life even is and I'm and I'm it, 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 my anxiety a lot of times comes from feeling too existential about things or feeling too um, obsessed with those ideas and that feeling of being a, a small human in this very scary existence um uh it's it's yeah it's it's horrible when when it hits hard and 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 it'll like affect my my time with with certain people like I'll I'll be hanging out with people or hanging out with whoever and then it's uh it it comes down hard suddenly and then I'll I'll, I'll just feel it affect my mood and I'll feel I'll feel like total shit it's nuts how when I have a really bad episode with it it's uh it just feels like i'm i can't breathe sometimes it feels like i can't you know not really i can breathe but it feels like i'm i'm, I'm focused so much on my breathing i'm focused so much on, on on my health i get a lot of health anxiety even though i don't have health insurance i rarely go and see the doctor it's bad it's it's pretty fucked up living in the u.s for that reason but what are you gonna do um i yeah, rarely get my health checked out, so I'm like constantly like worrying about every choice that I make, worrying about everything that I put into my body, and you know my diet's not. Oh, let's turn this on. My diet's not perfect, but I don't destroy. I don't. I'm not destructive with my body that much, so I, I try to remind myself that I'm not as bad as, as some people can be when it comes to diet or exercise or drinking or whatever the fuck um, drug use. Like I, I don't. But I, regardless of how I. I abstain from a lot of things. I'm always freaking out about things that are dormant. I'm freaking out about like hidden things that develop over time when it comes to my health. I get a lot of bad anxiety with that. I've been having issues with with feeling anxious, not so much recently, but for maybe earlier this year and maybe like some, some like some certain moments in the last few weeks I've had um moments of, of feeling super anxious when performing like I'll be on stage and playing music and suddenly feel that my singing is bringing my heart rate up and I feel like all this rush of, of blood going to my head and then I am freaking out that I'm gonna sing so hard and like like when I perform I like kind of overdo it sometimes I kind of um, you know really for the sake of getting tips for the sake of just making it a, a good show I kind of go all out every single time that I sing and perform and it's you know not necessary, but I don't really know how to how to not do that. So uh, I've been feeling moments of yeah, like when I'm performing, especially if I'm outside and it's, I'm in the heat. I'm thinking like, am I gonna overexert myself? Am I gonna like pass out right now? Am I gonna die? I'm constantly having anxiety about dying every single day. I think I'm, I'm I have a really bad uh, problem with with focusing so much on my mortality and thinking everything that I'm doing, every decision that I'm making is just going to ultimately kill me slowly. Um, these are all deeper issues than just my anxiety. These are all things that I've been working on for a long time and uh, and it's tough. It's tough to not focus so much on 
you know, and it's a good and bad thing. Apparently there's studies that show that people that are like hypochondriacs don't live as long, but at the same time, if you're not ever thinking about your health, you know, are you, are you going to just unnecessarily destroy yourself without realizing it? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I've had like weird moments recently where I'm performing and, and, um, it's funny, music is supposed to be the one thing that helps me escape from all of that shit. The music is like the one thing that's actually calmed me and helped me feel human, helps me feel safe. And now even that is being affected by my anxiety and I'm, and I'm really bothered by that. It's not, and this is where the problem with that stuff is when I'm drinking that goes away. Like if I have a couple of beers at a gig, it helps significantly as far as it helps me not think about it. Sometimes when I smoke, it can make the anxiety worse, but I think it's it'll happen regardless. Sometimes I don't, you know, I don't think, a lot of times I don't think it's the drinking or the smoking. It's just like, if you're having an episode, you're gonna have an episode regardless. Like I've had many episodes without be, with being completely sober as well. So um, the the feeling of that though, the feeling of like having that issue when in the place where I, it's literally like a safe haven for me playing music on stage and playing for people. It's like fucked up to to have that issue with something that's so personal and something that I am absolutely in love with doing. I'm, I'm, I'm such a diehard fan of performing on stage. And lately it's been like affecting me. I'm wondering if it's a lot of tension that I might hold. Sometimes I'm wondering if I'm not relaxing enough because I play and I play guitar and sing kind of so intensely and have this need to like control every bit of what I'm doing every second that I wonder if that's creating some sort of tension in my entire body and, and fucking with my back, fucking with my, you know, everything. I feel it like affecting like every bit of who I am sometimes. So I just try to relax nowadays. I'm, I'm just, as far as how I'm handling ha these anxious episodes, I'm, I'm just trying to relax. I'm trying to like reframe my mind, reframe my thoughts because that helps sometimes it's weird how like you could be so in control of these things like i will be and sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it does sometimes not but like i i do have moments of feeling that anxiety building up like i i literally it, can, it feels kind of like as tony soprano would put it, it feels almost like ginger ale like in my head it feels it feels like this this bubbling up something is is, is like a like a like a pot of boiling water um on, on a stove top it's it's like constantly just building and building and, and, and you, you've, I've had moments of feeling like it's gonna burst or feeling like I'm gonna have a fucking ulcer, something, it, it, my, my deep paranoia for my, my, my body and just my physical being is, is constant. I'm constantly anxious about what's going on in my body and what's going on in my brain. So um, the, uh, what I've been trying to do is reframe it. As soon as I feel it coming on, you can literally feel it building. I feel, I feel my heart sink and I feel my stomach churn I can feel like someone's kind of like twisting my my organs and twisting like every bit of of my insides, you know, just just twisting them around. And then when I feel that coming on, I just try to reframe my mind and like to to something else. I try to just focus on something else and something else that's going to make me feel better and um, maybe give some sort of relief to it. It's it's all about not not trying to like stop it or or shift it because I think sometimes. I'm not saying anxiety is a good thing, but there, there are probably reasons that we feel this way. Just like stress, sometimes stress can be a good or a bad thing. A lot of times it can be bad, but there are times where we stress out for a reason. We get nervous for a reason. So I'm just lately trying to, to, to not let it overwhelm me and also just shift the way I'm feeling or try to shift the way I'm feeling about something in that moment, in that exact moment, it's like one of those, the, the sooner you nip it in the butt, the bud? So the sooner you nip it in the bud, you can, um, you can, you can give, you can give yourself relief a lot faster. It's what I've realized. It's like, it's, if I stop it as soon as it starts, that's a lot easier than when it's kind of like a freight train and it just keeps going and, and it's hard to catch up to and it's hard to, to relieve yourself when, when it's, uh, when it's kind of getting ahead of you and, and you and you feel like you don't have control over it. That's the that's the biggest issue is like we we have control over these things and at the same time we don't. It's it's weird how the mind can work like that and the body can work like that. I feel that I'm always in control and I'm never in control at the same time. So 
I don't know, these are the complexities of our, of our, you know, nervous systems and our, and our, the way our brains work, the chemistry of all of it. So I, um, I just had some weird deja vu. Dude, deja vu is fucking weird. I've literally seen all of this, the ring light, the camera, my bed being like this and all the colors of everything. Shit's freaky. I've definitely seen this in a dream or something like years ago. Um, but yeah, so the whole thing, the whole thing is, uh, I, I think as soon as you're trying to stop it, as soon as it starts and trying to just focus on something, I just try to focus on something that I like or something that, that makes me feel comfortable, makes me feel relaxed. Maybe uh, I think of Seinfeld, like one of my favorite shows or one of my favorite movies or, you know, music. Sometimes I'll think about, you know, a lot of my favorite musicians or people that are not even no longer with us and, and some, something about, you know, I don't know thinking about Lennon and George Harrison from the Beatles or thinking about certain people that give me comfort in in that way any way at all like I'm, I'm trying to lately just find something that that makes me feel more comfortable and makes me feel um, any sort of relief like that that's what's funny is if you if you can reframe your brain into something that is is going to soothe it you just want to soothe it and I don't want to say massage it, but you want to handle it with care and, and handle it delicately while also just trying to be aware of, of the fact that I'm sh lately just trying to be aware of the fact that I, I have to, I have to help myself. The worst part about any kind of anxious episode or any, any kind of issues that we might have with ourselves is we are the only ones that can fix it. I'm the only one that can fix any sort of issue I might have mentally or physically or whatever. I'm the only person that's going to be able to to um to help myself in that way i don't want to take anti-anxiety medicine i don't want to have to rely on something to fix they're not fix this but um to help out with these these things because i don't it's not that i don't believe in taking medication for those things it's that i i personally just don't want to a have to spend money on it i don't want to have to I don't want to get used to it either and then suddenly I don't have it anymore or, or I try to like, you know, wean myself off of it or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, I, try, like, I don't want to have to deal with any sort of withdrawals or any sort of like shift in having it and then not having it. Like it's different with like my allergy medicine or certain things that are, aren't affecting me so drastically. I take allergy medicine like every day, like Zyrtec or 24 hour allergy relief. So um, that's a lot different because it's so, it's just a very mild, um, antihistamine and shit. So completely different than taking a medication for depression or, or anything like that. I, I'm never wanting to feel like I'm such a mental case that I need medicine, not as severely as other people that actually do need it at least. Like I'm totally fine. Like I always have to remind myself that I am a lot more, um, let it, I don't want to say that I'm, that I have, that I'm more normal than, than, people that deal with those things but I'm not as severe like the one I have these issues it's not as severe as some other people some people have such horrible anxiety they can't leave the house they can't do anything they can't live and that's not me like I, I get high and I go out in public and play music and deal with people like coming up and talking to me I get horrible anxiety when I'm out in public playing music because people are so unpredictable this is a video for a completely this is a completely other uh, video. I have been wanting to do a video on my experiences as a musician, but we're talking about anxiety today. But but I, I legitimately have horrible anxiety when I play out in crowds in South Florida because people in Florida are fucking crazy and unpredictable, and a lot of them are fucking assholes. And I hate them. I hate a lot of people down here because they're a bunch of spoiled, wealthy pieces of shit that have their heads up so far up their fucking asses that they can't see straight. Um, so yeah, that, that I have a lot of issues with, I don't have issues with playing out and performing in public. This is completely separate than having performance anxiety or anxiety during a performance. But when other people are there in the bar, especially cause they're drinking, they get ballsy. They, the audacity that they will have to say whatever the fuck is what makes me anxious because I am not good at handling people that are, are nasty or rude. I've called people out if they're being rude to me, like on the microphone, I, I will just make the situation worse. So it's not even an anxiety on them affecting me. It's me not giving a fuck and then making the situation even more awkward and uncomfortable for people in the place. Cause I will make a scene. I will make them look like a fucking asshole. So, um, that's the one time I'll have like 
bad anxiety when going out in public. Otherwise, I don't, I don't, I don't have that that many issues with anxiety when I'm out in the world. It, it just comes out of nowhere. It's a weird feeling how it just I could be completely fine, and then suddenly something will just shift, and I will feel like death. I will feel like I'm dying. I will feel like I'm suffocating in my own tormented. Uh, ideas or, or my, my own my, my own thoughts that just kind of completely consume me and make me feel like I am uh, going to, to wither away into nothingness. Anxiety just makes you feel very like small. Like I feel very small and very weak and sick. It's, it's, it's awful when anxiety can hit you so hard that you feel like you want to throw up. Um, just talking about this even, I'm not feeling anxious at all right now, but just talking about it makes me remember like those moments and it, and it gives me that, uh, you almost feel this, you know, um, memory of it or this familiarity of it just, just by the very nature of thinking about it. It's, it's one of those things, the more you think about it, the worse it gets. The more you dwell on it, the worse it gets. The, the, every bit that you're trying to put into it that in order to try to, to bring some sort of relief onto yourself it, it, it almost is like dig you're just digging a hole deeper into it and that's um that's the worst part is when you know you're trying to to fix it and it's and it's just work making it worse it's like holding on to a bar of soap or something and you just can't you know it just keeps slipping away from you so that, that's that's the worst part of it is that you you can sometimes like reframe the brain and you can sometimes completely shift the way you feel and then sometimes just the act of doing that makes it significantly worse or makes you think about it more and then it just lasts longer. The worst thing is it lasting a long time. It I've had moments of it like ruining my entire day. Like it can just ruin the fucking day if I'm if it happens to me middle of the afternoon and then I don't really feel any better until I go to sleep and wake up the next day. Um, that's that's the worst part of it is when it doesn't go away for a very long time. Um, I feel anxious when I it's normal to feel like feel these things, feel anxiety or depression when we go through traumatic experiences. I lost a few people, but someone, I lost my accountant back in 2021, I think. And uh, he was a good friend of mine, a good friend of my mom's. And um, when he passed away, I just kept having these really big, I had to like stop smoking weed here and there because I it was just making me have those big thoughts and thinking about death and thinking about how we're all gonna die and everything's just death, everything's the end. It's death, 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 die, die, die. And um, yeah, when things like that happen, it affects me tremendously. It makes me feel way worse. So, and that's, again, I have to remind myself, that's understandable, that's like normal to feel that way after losing someone that you're close to. He was the first person, who's a, my, my friend Greg, he was a really wonderful person. He was the first person that I knew decently well and um, uh, had multiple conversations with, had known for years, and then he passed away. I lost a good bit of my family when I was like a toddler, but it was so long ago and I was too young to really like comprehend what that was, but uh, like, a lot, like I lost my grandma to ALS and my mom's sister, my aunt, my mom's sister passed away in a car accident when I was four or five. My dad's um, adopted mother passed away as well around that time, so I had a lot of bouts of, of trauma when I was so young and it, it was it was too I was too young to really process any of it in a, in a normal way I saw how it affected my parents tremendously though and I saw like, but but Greg losing Greg and losing anybody at this point it had been years since I had really like I, I've never I've rarely lost um and 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 I lost another friend recently too my, my friend my good friend Kevin who was a lo another local musician and it's just weird how um when these things happen, it can make it can make that shit way worse. So um, that's something to think about too. If you're going through something traumatic, if you're going through something that's um, affecting you that much, that uh, affecting you that drastically, then um, of course these are gonna these moments are gonna are gonna happen. With with Kevin, he was sick for a few years, so I was kind of mentally preparing for that for a while, trying to stay optimistic, despite how nihilistic and pessimistic I can be. I was trying to stay very positive about it. I was trying to tell myself for a while that he was gonna be that he was gonna be fine, but but Greg just passed away out of nowhere when people just kind of are gone. I don't know. It's it's a very weird shift. So um, yeah, the, depending on what's going on in our lives, depending on what we experience in the moment, is obviously going to affect these things, but. 
when these things are occurring out of nowhere, they're occurring randomly and, and just, uh, I always say wave, though, I use the word waves a lot because it always feels like that. It always feels like suddenly there's just this swoop in my brain. There's this swoop in my physical being that, that, that I can literally just feel like a difference suddenly in it. And it's, it's scary. It's scary more than anything else because I don't know. I don't want to be having an anxious episode or having, having an issue with that in the middle of something very important where I need to be focused, where I need to be, people are relying on me. I don't want to have that be a problem in a situation where I need to be, um, I need to have like a, as, as much mental capacity and, and, and be able to, to use my brain in, in the best way possible. I, I have a deep fear of it, you know, affecting me in a way that I can't be there for others or, or you know, handle uh, handle certain situations in a healthy way. That that's the worst part about it is you you not only are are dealing with these feelings, but you will you know if you don't have a say of when they happen, like it can happen at the worst time. It can happen at like a you know the uh, it can happen in the worst situation. So that that's something I. I have a genuine uh, concern for and I have a genuine paranoia of because I just don't want it to, you know, make me any less than, I don't want to not be able to, to you know, be able, I don't want to, I don't want to not be able to, 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 like I said, be, be myself and, and use my brain to, to its full capabilities because um, it's very easy for that stuff to to mess with that. It just throws a wrench in it. Uh, it feels like anxiety is constantly just a wrench being thrown into the engine of my brain and um, just gets in the way. The, the worst part is that it just gets in the way and it just um, it feels horrible. It just feels very horrible. So what can we end this video on? Like what are some decent ways? Like, wh how, like what are some things that I can I can personally work on that we could all work on to make that better or try to try to alleviate some of that anxiety at least. I don't know. Um, I mean, I do know, but I, 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 everything I've been saying has kind of been one long thought, so it's hard to break these down in individual bullet points or whatever, but try just try to reframe my mind, try to remind myself that it's gonna, it'll, it'll pass eventually, it's gonna go away, it's not gonna last forever, you know, and I try to find comfort in things that make me feel some sort of relief. I try to, uh, I don't want to say just go with it. Like just going with it can be good or bad. I have no fucking idea. Uh, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not, I'm, I don't know that much about the psychology of these things as much as I'm fascinated by that topic. I am not aware of, of the actual inner workings of these things, but I'm just trying to figure out what works for me and I'm trying to figure out what's going to make this shit less, or make it more bearable, make it less shitty, make it less uh, um, overwhelming. So yeah, just, just it's fucked up how it's almost like this like dark passenger, like Dexter almost, not to that extent being a fucking murderer, but it's a dark passenger, like a dark, like this, this thing that's just kind of like a shadow following you around. And I just kind of want to uh, embrace it. I just kind of want to handle it as well as I can and, and learn to live with it. It's, I, I think it'll be, especially in this time right now and whatever our timeline is, however long humanity is going to last, I don't know. But especially in this time where like the economic state of our world and our country is pretty fucked. The world is pretty fucked with climate change. People are pretty fucked as far as how we're very civilized and still grisly, violent animals at the same time. Um, we're not in a great place. I have to remind myself too, we're not living in the best of times right now. COVID was one thing, everything that's been happening afterward and just the state of, of our planet is really fucked up right now. And I'm just uh, every day trying to accept it. I'm trying to enjoy the little things in life and enjoy life regardless, but it's hard when you can't 
you know, and you can't, as far as like, I'm so powerless when it comes to the way our country is run. I'm so powerless. I, I can vote. That's about as much as I can do. But I'm not a politician. I'm not. I don't. I, don't, I can't really do much at all when it comes to that stuff. Trying to fix the world. You can't fix the world as one person. I mean, these videos can have some sort of influence on others, but I don't. I'm not. The, I'm not like a. I'm not an activist. I'm not the kind of person that anybody should, nobody should ever listen to me for life advice or for advice on the world because I'm always just going to accept that things are fucked up and that there's not much we can do about it. As much as I want to do things about it, I just don't see how I can. So, um, yeah, I have to, that's something to think about too. We are not living in an easy time. I wonder why anxiety is a thing that's become more of an issue now than ever. I think it's because we have... I actually have very little problems compared to like my parents and the par my, my parents' parents and their parents' parents. The amount of problems that someone at 18 had going into World War One or World War Two is significantly more drastic than my problems. So it's like this mix of very little problems and having time to think about all these things unnecessarily. So a lot of, a lot of times I, I think I've, I've just spent way too much time thinking about all this stuff and it's not healthy to do that. It's not healthy to just obsess over how fucked up things are and all the like bad shit in the world. So um, that's a part of it too. Maybe that's the main reason why I why I feel that way is because I'm I'm always just. I mean I, I'm not the world being in the state that it is is one thing. I'm always concerned about how it affects people. People get desperate and they do drastic things in order to save themselves in order to survive. That's what freaks me out more than anything. Is are we gonna uh, it's very possible we will be fighting over clean water eventually. It's very possible that we will be fighting over a lot of things that are basic necessities. And it's only going to, it might only get worse. It's very, I could easily see that happening in 20 years. Just things becoming a lot more, just a, a lot hard. It, I can see it getting much harder to live and harder to exist unless you have like a fuckload of money and can pay your way into, uh, you know, getting everything you need still, but yeah, this shit's bad. It's it's really it's really bad how how much this affects every one of us, and it makes total sense that we're all kind of driving ourselves crazy over this. I feel myself going nuts a lot of the times over or like just what's happening around me. I'm not unaware of the what's going on in the world. A lot of times I'm using my phone constantly, and I'm addicted to social media and addicted to the internet to make sure that I'm aware of things that are happening. If you didn't have internet and like COVID was happening or you weren't watching the news or anything, like how the fuck would you know what's going on? Um, there are people that are completely off the radar and just don't have any fucking clue what's going on in the world. And that's probably peaceful and, and scary all at once. You know, I would never want to like not be aware of what's going on, but this hyper awareness of everything, this unnecessary awareness of all of it is, um, is pretty bad too. So I, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm acquiescing to all of it. I'm just kind of reluctantly accepting everything at this point. And I am uh, not sure what else to do. What the fuck can I do? Except for worry about myself and worry about what I'm doing right now in this moment. I'm just trying to focus on the moment and live in right now and live in this specific time and space. So, um... Maybe that's all we can do is just focus on ourselves, try to try to better ourselves so that we can uh, handle uh, hang, handle these episodes and bouts of depression and anxiety in a better way. It's it's not the thing itself; it's how we handle it. It's always going to be how we handle it. Everything's always going to be. Life happens, and life is always going to be tough. But how we receive it and how we process it is always always. Um, something to our advantage and something that we can that we can do it's always something that we have at our at our disposal so um yeah i think i think all, all i want to end this video on is 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 try to focus on yourself try to find comfort in the things that you do love and find find comfort in the things that make you feel happiness make you feel good because that's more important than, than anything else is just doing as much as we can to feel good while we are, are alive and while we're healthy before we get old and things get really, really, really physically tough. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, I, I hope this helps. I hope 
I don't know if anything I've ever said in any of these videos makes sense, a lick of sense, but I, I hope that my experiences can be a, you know, a window into these things and a window into, uh, you know, what it's like as you get older. These, these things get a lot harder as you get older. I felt, I'm sure I was still anxious like 10, 15 years ago. It was about different things. I think, I think these things are always, like, I think it's a constant, but what you choose to focus on and what you have anxiety about or what you might get depressed about just changes over time. And um, that's going to always be completely different depending on what's happening in your life. So let's just try to try to handle it as best as we can. Try to enjoy life while we can because it's awful to spend the limited time that we have suffering with, you know, any of this shit, suffering with any issues mentally or, or emotionally, it's, it's, it's horrible, it's draining, and it's just, it just sucks. It just fucking sucks more than anything else. So most we could do is, is yeah, find, find peace with it, find peace with the, the things that we, that we love and care about, and um, just do, I don't know, just doing our best. Just everyone is just trying to do what they can and, and handle it in their own way. So I hope you're able to handle any anxiety that you might have. I hope this helps. I uh, am not the best public speaker. I'm not, I'm not great. I, 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 I find myself m much better at framing these things, framing these thoughts if I'm writing them down, but that's where this is. These videos are very, again, healthy for me because it's forcing me to get better at this. It's forcing me to try to word how I'm feeling a lot better and communicate my feelings um, in a more effective way. So uh, that, yeah, that's, that's all we can do. I hope that's something to take away from this is just find comfort within it and know that it's not going to last forever. Nothing lasts forever, including our lives so <laughs> try to enjoy it while we can and try to enjoy life while it's being lived and i hope that your anxiety or my anxiety i hope that these things don't um consume us and 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 run our lives don't let it run your life is all i want to end this video with don't let it run you don't let it control you you gotta keep it on a fucking leash and 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 point a finger at point point a finger at it and say well, fuck off and 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 just uh yeah that's it <laughs> keep it keep it on a tight leash tell it to fuck off and try to uh try to grab a hold of it so that it's not controlling you and grabbing a hold of you so anyway take it easy